Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. This is part 3 of my course, The Practical Guide to Mac Security. This course is brought to you free thanks to my Patreon supporters. To find out more about the Patreon campaign, go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now that you know that having strong passwords is vitally important to the security of your Mac and all your online accounts, let's learn how to create some on your Mac. To create a random password you need to be using a computer program called a password manager to generate a strong randomly generated unique password for every site and service you sign up to. There is such a password manager built into Mac OS. So we're going to use that. However, you could also use a third party password manager such as 1Password or LastPass to do this. The built in password manager is found in Safari. So you go to use the Safari web browser on your Mac and let's say you want to sign up for an account at a site. So I'm going to use archive.org as an example here. Let's sign up by clicking that link there. And you can see I can sign up for an account here. I need to enter my email address, choose a name, and then a password. So let's enter an email address, choose a name, and now a password. Now immediately you could see that Safari takes over here and creates a strong password. You could see it filled in here. You can actually only see part of what's there. You don't need to see the entire thing. So you can see that this is a strong password randomly generated using letters, numbers, uppercase, lowercase, everything. It's going to give you this message over here. Safari created a strong password for this website. And that it will automatically be saved to your iCloud keychain. So we are going to say yes, use the strong password. And now you can see it filled in there. It's as easy as that. Now let's say at a later time we return to the site and we want to log in. We don't have to remember that long password. We don't have to type it in at all. As a matter of fact we don't even need to remember our ID. Safari is going to prompt us to enter this in. So when I go to click here to enter in my email address and password Safari is going to prompt me right away recognizing that there is already an email address and password stored that I can just access by clicking here. If there was more than one, if I had say two accounts at this site, then I would see a list of two of them. If there are several more, I could always go to other passwords and it would bring up a longer list. I'm going to select this one here and it's going to recall my user ID and my password and place them in there. I didn't have to type them. I didn't even have to see the password. Also note that there's a little key here to the right. If I click on that, it will also bring this up. So if I perhaps clicked on the wrong one or maybe I hit a key and dismissed it, I could bring this back up and use it again. And then I could use the login button to log back into this site. So every time I visit this site, I don't have to enter my password in. It can automatically be pulled from Safari's database of passwords. Now there is a way to see a list of your passwords. If you go to Safari Preferences, then you can go to Passwords. And here you have to confirm by entering in your password or you can use Touch ID if you have a Mac with Touch ID. And here you can see a list of all the websites where you have passwords. You can see your username and you can see the password here but it's blocked out. You can select it and it will show you the password if you really want to see it. You can double click it to bring up details. There's also a Details button down here. And it will show you the website, the username, and the password. You could even go in here and select it, copy it. You can change it. So if you've changed your password and for some reason Safari didn't update you could type something new here as well. In this list you can control click on any one of these and you can copy the website, copy the username, or copy the password. And you could also simply hit the Delete key and it will delete this password. So if you want to get rid of one you can. There is also an option here. You can see it says Detect Passwords Compromised by Known Data Leaks. This will look at your passwords and see if any of them show up in a list of passwords that have been compromised. Now it could have been compromised because it was your password on that account and 
that is now something that's out there in list for people to be able to obtain. It could be that that password was used by you on another site or perhaps somebody completely different if it's a weak password. But of course if you see any indicators here showing that there is a compromised password then you should go and change it for that site. So how do you change a password for a site? Well let's continue with the login for archive.org here. And I will look at my settings for my account. And you can see here it allows me to change my password. So if I go to enter in a password here you can see it's going to ask me if I want to fill in my password. But I don't want to do that. I want to change it. But if I click here you can see I get something that looks very similar. But one of the things it's going to have is suggest a new password. So this will work slightly different on different sites. But basically you go through whatever the website's regular functionality is for changing your password. And when you enter in a new password like that and then you hit Change Account Settings it should update the account with that new password in Safari. So let's check here. and You can see it put the new password in place. And that's because when we went here and suggested a new password it was Safari itself suggesting the new password. So it knows that that new password is now set and when you go in and look again you can see that it's remembering that new password for the next time you want to log in. So updating your password should automatically update Safari's list of passwords. And the great thing about doing this as part of iCloud Keychain is these passwords will also be used on your iPad, your iPhone, other Macs, anything connected to your iCloud account will have access to these passwords as long as you're logged into that iCloud account and also of course logged into that device. So you create a new password here on your Mac and you'll be able to log into the same site on say your iPhone. Now starting with macOS Monterey there is also the ability to access your password outside of Safari in System Preferences. So you go to System Preferences and then you'll see Passwords there. It looks a lot like how it does in Safari. And you'll see these same passwords there and be able to access them and edit them. So you can do this without ever going into Safari. This is especially useful if the website also has an app and you're trying to log in using the same user ID and password in the app that you are on the web. Of course you're not in Safari when you're doing that. So accessing the passwords from System Preferences might be more convenient. Now one last word about password managers. A third party password manager is especially useful if you are using a Mac and maybe some non-Apple products. Maybe you have an Android phone. Maybe you have a Windows computer. You want to go beyond the devices that use iCloud. In that case a third party password manager that's cross platform could be handy because then you have access to your passwords everywhere. One such one that I use is 1Password. You can get that at onepassword.com but the apps are also available in the App Stores. And also another one that a lot of people use is LastPass. So the idea here is that you can save your passwords to websites and access them using browser extensions in any browser. So on your Mac in say Chrome or Firefox and also in Windows in Chrome, Firefox, Edge. Uh, and having a third party password manager allows you to use these passwords in all sorts of situations where a completely Apple centric solution like Safari and iCloud will not. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.